Is Blender close to becoming the industry standard? Before we get into the topic, just a quick reminder. Before starting any Blender project, check out BlenderEverything.com. I'm creating free starter files and templates for Blender artists so you don't have to waste time starting from scratch. It's really competitive out there, so let's help each other out. For the longest time, Blender was that cool, free thing you told your friends about, while the big studios kept clinging to their expensive licenses for Maya, Houdini, and Cinema 4D. But in the last few years, something's changed. Blender isn't just for hobbyists anymore. It's creeping into professional pipelines, getting corporate backing, and pulling in add-ons so good they make you wonder why they aren't built in already. So is Blender actually close to becoming the industry standard? Let's talk. Yes, it's free. That's the obvious part. But that's not the real killer feature. Blender is everything in one box. Modeling, sculpting, texturing, animation, simulations, compositing, video editing, even 2D grease pencil animation, all in the same program. You don't have to juggle five different apps just to finish a project. And the update speed is ridiculous. New features land so often it's hard to keep up. Geometry nodes changed procedural workflows completely. Cycles got a massive speed boost. EV made real-time previews a normal part of everyday work. No wait for next year's paid upgrade nonsense. It just keeps moving forward. add-ons are where Blender really shines, but they also expose one of its biggest problems. Take Scatterflow. It lets you scatter rigid bodies anywhere with almost no limits. Imagine that built in. Or RBD Lab and Flip Fluids, basically the grown-up professional versions of Blender's rigid body and Mantaflow systems. The thing is, these aren't wild new ideas. Most add-on developers just take what Blender already has and make it more functional, stable, and fun to use. Sometimes they build entirely new systems, but a lot of the time it's about polishing what's there. And here's the reality. Big studios don't care, because they build their own custom tools anyway. Maya, Houdini, Cinema 4D, they all get stacked with in-house plugins. But for small studios and solo artists, relying on third-party add-ons for core features can be a huge pain. A decade ago, saying, let's use Blender in a studio would have got you laughed out of the meeting room. Now, it's showing up in real productions. Blender's fingerprints are there. Ubisoft, Epic Games, NVIDIA, they're all putting money into the Blender development fund. Blender has officially gone from cute indie tool to, okay, let's at least see what it can do. The asset lock-in problem. Here's another reason big studios move slow. They've got mountains of assets, materials, and tools built over years that only work in their current software. Imagine if you had to switch to Maya tomorrow. How many of your old projects, textures, or add-ons would just stop working? <laughs> you can't just wave a magic wand to convert them. It's hours of work, and sometimes it's flat-out impossible. This is why we need more Blender-ready asset libraries and kit bashes. And it's starting to happen. Evermotion, a huge name in the asset space, now offers Blender packages. Kitbash 3D supports Blender 2. It looks like Grayscale Gorilla, a giant in the Cinema 4D world, has started making some Blender stuff as well. The more ready-made assets exist for Blender, the easier it'll be for studios to make the jump without feeling like they're throwing away years of work. The next big arms race in 3D isn't just about better render engines, it's about AI-assisted workflows and real-time production. Studios are already using AI for concept art, texture upscaling, motion capture cleanup, and even animation in-betweens. And here's where Blender has a huge advantage. It's open source. That means AI tools can be integrated directly without waiting for some corporate approval cycle. The Blender community has already jumped on it. There are AI-powered add-ons for texture painting, model generation for quick background characters or props, and even tools that auto-generate PBR materials from reference images. These aren't just gimmicks. They're speeding up workflows in a way that was unthinkable even two years ago. Combine that with EV Next and real-time path tracing improvements, and Blender could become one of the most flexible platforms for the AI-driven real-time future. If the devs and the add-on community keep pushing here, Blender won't just catch up to the competition, it could leapfrog over it. So is it almost there? Blender's not going to completely replace Maya or Houdini overnight. But the gap is closing fast. If the core team starts baking in more of the features we currently rely on add-ons for, the scatter flows, the RBD labs, the divine cuts, and keeps improving pipeline compatibility, we could be looking at a real industry standard contender. Right now, Blender is the scrappy underdog that's suddenly standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heavyweights. 
If you're already on the Blender train or just thinking about hopping on, check out BlenderEverything.com. It's my collection of free Blender project templates and starter files. No signups, no payments, no crediting me. Just download what you like and get straight to creating.